What's going on guys? This is uh, Coach Mark again. Uh, give you guys an opportunity to send me some questions with my second Q&A. So I appreciate you uh, sending me some questions and I'll be glad to answer them as best I can. Uh, so let's get right down to it. Christina asks, what is your feedback on SARMs? If any positive, which ones for a female trying to build? If negative, why? SARMs versus pro-hormones, question mark. And let's just say said female isn't ready to go on steroid, the steroid route due to unknown and uh, unknown reasons. What is your feedback on that? Well, I sort of touched base uh, on SARMs in my last Q&A. You kind of don't know what you're getting out there because of the quality of raw material. However, SARMs is a form of I'll say new age method for people that don't want to take the, ster the steroids in general due to the massive amounts of si uh, side effects. However, the purity of a SARM, say, say steroids are about 98 to 99% pure. A SARM will probably give you about 80, 85% depending on uh, the raw material that's being made out of. Now, with side effects to a female, all enhancements will bring side effects. However, SARMs will give the least amount. Um, that being said, the said female needs to research what kind of results they're trying to get and go that route. Um, personally, I've never used SARMs in general. I've used peptides, steroids, prohormones, uh, insulin, growth hormone, pretty much all kinds of orals and research, research chemicals. Now, with SARMs, I have, like I said, I have no experience with, but I kind of feel it's like you, you don't know what you're going to get with them, uh, and it's, it's a gamble. Like I said in my last Q&A, it's a gamble. But you need to research where it's coming from, who the supplier is, and then go with that route. And if you find a, a decent supplier, give it a try. You'll see what, you know, what kind of results you'll get. But uh, honestly, you, you get what you pay for with SARMs. It's uh, I say if you're going to go the enhanced route, go all the way. But if you're, fe you're for, if you're a female not looking to compete, I'm s competitors a different ball game. If you're just a you know regular f female that just wants to work out, get toned, diet, training, food, cardio, that's where you need to stay. Enhancements aren't the way to, the route to go. Keep yourself natural. Don't don't fuck with your hormones. Don't fuck with your balances. It's just going to give you side effects and. Unlike a, a male, some of these, say a, a male takes steroids or whatever, some of these side effects will go away. But with a female, many side effects will not. You're kind of screwed in that sense. Your voice will deepen, uh, your genitals will enlarge, you'll start growing hair on your body, uh, you, in, you know, your face may change. With enhancements, I say, unless you're a competitor, females stay away, all right? So that's my two cents on that. Next question. <clears throat> How do you afford your food bill as a bodybuilder? People think uh, eating whole amounts of food is, co is, is costly. It is. But however, you got you to gotta put things in perspective. Now, say if I was a regular you know, individual and I have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, going to Subway will cost me 12 bucks. All right? Now, with that $12, I can buy five pounds of chicken. Uh, that's 10 bucks and a bag of rice will cost me a couple bucks two bucks right there i have meals for two or three days just for 12 bucks just a carb source and a protein source it's not that expensive when you do the math you just gotta put, i think the most bit the biggest part people don't want to put the work in to cook it okay um, I'll, I'll throw a link in the uh, comments section in the in description box of my uh, bodybuilding uh, diet on a budget. I pretty much constructed a $3,500, I mean a 3,500 calorie diet, six meals a day for a hundred bucks a week. Okay. And that's for a, a bodybuilder. Now for a female that can last a lot longer for a hundred bucks. Um, so I'll put that in the description box below on YouTube and uh, you can follow that. But yeah, just go to Walmart, pick everything up. And you'll see how cheap it is when you add up all the food and all the variety of foods you get. You know, I had a beef, chicken, Greek yogurt, eggs. Uh, 
yeah, vegetables, rice, potatoes, peanut butter. I mean, I had everything in there, oatmeal. So I'm, I made it where there's a whole variety of foods where you can't get bored. So it's not really expensive. It's more of like the work put in to afford to be a bodybuilder. Now, that being said, competing is a little bit different when it gets close to the show because sometimes a coach or their nutritionist will um, make it a, a requirement to eat a lot of fish. Now, fish can be very goddamn expensive. I hate fucking eating it sometimes during a prep. I love fish, but I hate eating vast amounts of it because of the, the cost, you know, in my wallet. Um... I mean, you can go tilapia, it's cheap, but some people can't stomach it and it just tastes like shit. I think it tastes like shit. But, uh, you know, they go to cod or something like that. So you're looking at five bucks, three to five bucks a pound between there. So you're looking at two or three pounds a day of fish. So it gets costly in the long run. So uh, <laughs> that's probably the only expensive part. Now, off season, <laughs> when, eating, when you're eating, you know, for I'm speaking on bodybuilder size, you know. Uh, 220 to, to 270 up in, in weight, um, you're looking at five to 6,000 calories a day. That can get a little costly. So you got to buy calorie dense foods, more fats, and uh, then it can be a little more maintained in the pocketbook. But uh, regardless, this is not a cheap industry, not a cheap sport. So if you get into it, you got to you gotta kind of you know think about, hey, I'm going to be eating a lot of food and it's going to cost me a lot of money. So there's not much you're gonna do about it. Just gotta deal with it if you wanna stay in the sport. Hi Mark, I tore a bicep tendon. What's your recommendation for uh, active recovery and a recovery protocol? <clears throat> I've torn both my biceps, my right and my left in 2015. Um, so I have a lot of experience with when it comes to recovery. Now, what I recommend is after surgery, if you're good enough, I'm just going by what I did. I'm not saying anyone should do this. You know, if you want to follow your doctor's protocol and your recommendations, that's cool. That's good. Do that. But this is what I did to get through it. Now, two or three days after surgery, I felt I needed to go to the gym. So I started to train legs and do cardio. Um, I was just in that routine habit of going to the gym, cooking my meals, all this stuff. So I didn't want to get out of that. And um, I just told myself, just keep moving, just keep moving. And it got me through it, all right? Now with active recovery, with the torn bicep, you gotta play it smart. Now, uh, active recovery is a stimuli where you're training one arm by itself, unilateral training. That will allow blood flow to go from one side of the body to the other. So it's still flowing nutrients, flowing blood throughout the whole body, okay? Now, people say, well, I'm just going to grow one side and the other side's not going to grow. Not necessarily. What I mean by, by active recovery is not doing heavy. It's just doing light movements, full range of motion, get the blood going, get the nutrients flowing through the body, and get them into that, and it'll start pushing all those nutrients into the injured side. Now, when you're good enough to kind of move your bicep after surgery, you'll probably take two weeks to even start, you know, extending it, moving it to a degree. I used light resistance bands and I started me with two pound dumbbells. And when I was on the treadmill or, you know, just walking, I would just be just slowly curling, just like this, 20, 30 reps of two pounds. Get it moving, get the blood flowing a little bit because the atrophy in the arm is going to just mind fuck you a little bit. It did me, I hated that part. And uh, even right now I'm dealing with uh, recovering from a torn tricep. I did a uh, eight weeks ago so um <clears throat> yeah i know i got bad fucking luck with tearing tendons but hey whatever um so you got to just listen to your body you have to understand what's a pain in the muscle or a pain in the injured area so if it feels like it's hurting the uh sur surgical uh surgical area where it's reattached don't push the envelope just keep moving it to a degree where you're not feeling any pain you're just moving it and get that extension going also if you can get a prescription for human growth hormone that's going to help for sure there's a bunch of peptides out there also you can stack with the growth hormone to speed up recovery i recommend bpc 157 and tb 500 i recently just did a eight week protocol for those for my torn tricep and man it was a uh 
it was a life uh, altering experience in the fact that it just sped up my recovery big time compared to just being on HGH. Um, and just keep eating well, that's important. Keep your protein up, all right? You don't have to worry too much about the, the carbs because you can't be, you're not gonna be training a lot. Um, but keep them in there for sure because uh, I find it important to have carbs regardless. Now, keep the protein up, keep the fats going, keep the carbs moderate, and keep the, you gotta keep that nutrition program going. Yeah, you're gonna have days where you're gonna eat like shit and you know, junk food on that because you're just wallowing in your own self-defeat and you're gonna have those moments, but that's part of the game. You'll just get through it. Just just keep focused on, hey, today was a bad moment, but tomorrow's a new day. Just keep yourself uh, thinking it's a new day and, a, and uh, you'll get through it. But yeah, it sucks tearing a tendon, I'm sorry. I feel for you, but I got a whole series on, you know, my YouTube channel here, uh, The Road to Recovery, Volume 1 and Volume 2 about, uh, Volume 1 is uh, my whole recovery process of my uh, my bicep tears, and then now, right now, I'm documenting uh, the tricep tendon rupture. So yeah, watch those if you need to, and it'll give you some insight of how I was feeling, what I was going through, what I was doing in these certain stages of the recovery, and uh, it may it may come in come in value and conduce to you. All right, so I wish you well, man. What do you recommend as a estrogen blocker during a cycle? I've always made it a priority to take a Remedex, regardless if I'm cruising or whatever, or completely on the cycle during a you know a steroid cycle. So keeping a Remedex in there is, is my go-to. I don't really go to anything else. Uh, I may pop in a Novadex once in a while and close to a contest, maybe four weeks out, I'll, I'll, I'll switch up to Letrozole. But uh, for the most part, I stick to Remedex. And depending on what I'm taking, how much I'm taking of each compound, of, of the compounds I'm on, uh, it will be pretty much probably a, either 0.5 milligrams three times a week or I'll do a milligram a day or a milligram every other day. So that's my basic go-to is Remedex. Coach Mark, <laughs> what's your sweet cravings? What do you go, what's your go-to for sweet cravings? Ah, oh, shit. Well, uh, honestly, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a cheesy guy. I'm a salty snack kid, kid snack guy. So I got Doritos, I got cheeses, I got goldfish. That's my, my goddamn go-to. I, I, I can't, it's like fucking crack to me. I can't help it. But yeah, that's my main go-to. But however... I don't know what the fuck is the reason why, but lately I've been craving chocolate again. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. So anything Reese's Pieces, I'll be pretty much eating. Uh, <laughs> and the big Kit Kats, you know, the thick, big ones they have now? Yeah, I'll go to those or, you know, Twix, um, Baby Ruth's, shit like that, man. Uh, whatchamacallit's. <laughs> it's really not helping my goddamn tricep recovery, I'll tell you that. But... Uh, uh shit <laughs> that's basically my go-to and uh it, it's just an ice cream i've been fucking eating ice cream here and there but yeah i don't usually get sweet cravings but right now i'm i'm i have some but i'm just getting at it in my system and i i know it will go away but uh, uh but like i said when you're going through like a recovery process you're gonna have i don't know i think it's because of the recovery process like you're you're, you're not as motivated to train a little bit because you're injured, so you can't full go full-blown in the gym. And you're like, eh, it's not really going to make a difference if I eat well or not. So your mind sort of plays tricks on you, and you have a you know, sn little little treat here and there. But, uh, yeah, I know it will pass once I'm you know fully functional to train 100%. I'm about 80% eight weeks out from, you know, eight weeks past the surgery. So I'm pretty much ahead of schedule by a, a lot. <laughs> Uh, I just can't do a lot of pressing movements at the moment, but I've been doing a lot of biceps and some back and some shoulders and uh, but just the pressing movements have been uh, still in the works. I'm slow with that. But other than that, that's the only sweet cravings I got. <laughs> I know, but I'm a cheese and Dorito guy at heart. What's the biggest piece of advice you can give someone starting out in training? Uh, I've been pressing a lot of weight, but I've been seeing the uh, not the results i'm looking for right now any advice that's a good one uh i would say the best piece of advice is don't worry about the numbers just uh focus on form range of motion and contraction of the muscle 
I see a lot of guys moving a lot of weight and it's not really doing anything. They're just pressing, moving shit with their ego. So if I can have any piece of advice for a beginner lift or even intermediate, even like, you know, a lot of pros just wanting to improve a body part, you know, even myself, I have to catch myself at times, is slow the shit down, you know. When you, when you, when you go fast on a movement, you're going to become, I would say, like, you, you make the rubber band effect. Inertia and the movements can make, do the movement, all right? Or inertia, the movement. When you slow shit down, you're stopping the rubber band effect, all right? So sometimes on squats, for example, instead of going up, down, up, down, fast, you know, I'll go down to the bottom and pause for three to four seconds. That's called a rest pause rep, okay? I'll go down there, I'll sit down my ass to the floor for three to four seconds and then press back up. That took the inertia completely out of the movement and the, and the muscle did the movement, all right? You didn't put any strain on anything, you just let the muscle do the movement because you didn't put a lot of strain on everything because you're not pr using a lot of weight to do it, okay? Because not many people can put four or five and you just like sit your ass to the grass at the bottom for three to four seconds. You kind of want to do it with a moderate weight so you get this contraction, you get the stretch of the muscle, of the muscle fascia. You want that to work. You want to get the blood in there and push it in there and then press. That's what's going to build a de decent physique, in my opinion, and that's going to develop a hard, a hard, grainy muscle in the long run. And plus, injury will be prevented in the long run. All right? So your, 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 percentage, your, your risk for injury is lowered and your factor for muscle growth is increased. So that's the biggest thing I can give advice when it comes to a beginner trainer. Slow shit down, do a full range of motion and get the reps right. A broken, a broken rep is a failed set, all right? Um, if you're doing three sets, I mean three reps right and then five wrong, that's a wasted set. You wanna have the same movement and the same intensity throughout the whole set. So keep that in mind so that's my personal advice and also I am a big believer in supersets so if you want to do one exercise 10 to 12 reps go to another one right away kill that muscle kill it push the blood in there and and then for one your your workouts will go faster and two you'll feel more satisfied you'll feel the pump the pump will come a lot faster and that being said, make sure a lot of sodium is in your diet so that you can get those muscles contracting, keep water in the muscle, and get good contractions. Salt is your friend. Do not take it out of your diet. Mark, what protein source do you recommend for the best nutritional results? All of them. <laughs> it's best to rotate your protein sources. Get every single one you can. Have some shrimp. Have some fish. Have some chicken. Have some steak. Have some eggs. Have some Greek yogurt. Get all the main protein sources within your program eventually because that's going to give you the entire amino acid profile range within your system, all right? Um, no protein is built the same, in my opinion. Every single protein source has a different benefit uh, and different, uh, how, um, a different uh, absorption rate, okay? People say eat fish, it thins your skin. That's nonsense. That's not what it fucking does, okay? it make it just easier on the body to process and digest hence why there's less bloating and it goes through your system a lot faster okay fish just absorb it just processes a lot faster than chicken or steak or whatever it just goes in and out of you pretty much that's why a lot of people that are a lot of competitors that are close to a show they're eating a lot of fish <laughs> they're always fucking hungry why because the fish digests fucking fast it doesn't thin your skin it processes and digests fast same thing with egg whites and whole eggs. Goes through the system pretty fast, okay? Now, people, people have said, hey, drinking egg whites versus cooked egg whites, there's a difference. There is, but uh, I don't think of it as a big enough issue or a big enough thing to, to red flag. If you want to drink them, drink them. I drink them at times. Now, you can also cook them. I cook them as well. I do both. Uh, I've seen no difference in them. Uh, I like making my shakes with some egg whites, with some almond milk, and then I put some protein powder in there and some fruit or oats. Blend that shit up with some ice cubes, and it's a good treat. Um, and plus, the, the salt from the egg whites kind of makes like a real milkshake. People never believe me until, until my clients say, I can't drink this milk. Try it. You'll never go back. And uh, they thank me for it in the long run. <laughs> it tastes fucking good. But, uh, yeah, have all the protein sources you can. And... Uh, you know, 
it all depends on your budget, obviously, but yeah, have all the prote protein sources you can, get all the different amino acid profiles in your system, and uh, yeah, keep rotating them. Coach, what time's the best time to do cardio? I know you've answered this before, or posted videos of this before, but what's your, what's your uh, explanation for it? Do you know what I'm going to say? I don't give a fuck what anyone says, like everyone else has said the same thing. Fasted, empty stomach, cardio is always the best. I've, I've done them all. I've done, I've done fed cardio. I've done in the middle of the day cardio. I've done fasted cardio. The cardio that does the best out of all those I've tried is the fasted steady state cardio. Uh, every morning I'll wake my ass up. I'll take my vitamins, take my Remedex, my growth, take my whatever, okay? Cup of coffee with, and just drink that, take a fat burner, and go do my cardio for 45 minutes to an hour. That's it, simple. I get my ass on the treadmill, I put it at 10 degrees to start, I put it at 2.4 miles per hour, Every 10 minutes, I add one or two point, a point to the miles per hour, and then I up it a degree. So by the time I'm done, I'm doing 15 degrees at maybe three three miles per hour, and I'm sweating. I'm 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 done. Okay, so that's what I do. My knees aren't shot. I'm not running. I find with a step mill that I get a little my my quads cramp up a bit, and I don't like that. So I thought, and plus it was hard on my knees. So I do a treadmill, an incline treadmill to save my knees. Uh, I ain't no young, young buck anymore. I'm kind of getting up there in age. I'm 39. So, um, yeah, fast and steady, steady state cardio. And afterwards, I'll have a shake with some berries. Um, and then an hour, hour and a half after that, I have my real breakfast. So I have like a cream of rice, grits, or oatmeal with like a cup and a half of uh, egg whites with three whole eggs and some uh, spinach and asparagus mixed in. And that's my fucking breakfast. That's my, my two, first two meals of the day. And I get that in quick after I do my cardio. So yeah, steady state fasted cardio is my go-to and that's what I recommend. Thanks everyone for chiming in this uh, Q&A session. This is Q&A number two. Um, really appreciate the questions. You know, I hope uh, the answers I gave you came to a good value to you. Um, keep following, keep sending me uh, questions. I'm happy to answer them. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Keep training hard and be well. Peace.